Hello and warm welcome to this talk, Monday the 22nd of February 2021. Now I want to start off, this is for the United States, this video primarily. I want to put together two data sets from the United States. One on the transmissibility of the new variants, which is accelerating, and the other on the one dose strategy for vaccination. And the bottom line of this video is really, I think the United States needs to urgently consider changing to a one vaccine followed by a three month delay before the second dose strategy. And let me tell you why. And I really hope the American authorities are considering this. Now, the first paper that makes me think along these lines is this. So uh, SARS coronavirus 2 variant of concern in the United States, challenges and opportunities. Now you might recognize um, Journal of the American Medical Association, so prestigious publication. Um, you might recognize some of the names. Dr. Walensky is the new director of the Centers for Disease Control. And you might recognize this name, Dr. Anthony S. Fauci as well. So um, <laughs> pretty well the top people in the country have written this. And I think this does show the um, the level of concern that there is in the States because it's going to be such a close run thing. And I really think they need this strategy change. Let me give you the evidence, right? So January the 10th, 2020, the first genomic sequence isolated in Wuhan. So uh, we know that the virus originated here in, in Wuhan or there in Wuhan rather. Uh, as of February the 3rd, 2021, the data that they have on this paper, uh, just about half a million sequences uploaded into the public domain. So these are in public domain. A lot more than this have been done, but they're the ones in the public domain. So in other words, there's lots of data now for people to go on. Scientists that study this in detail, I've got huge data sets now. And uh, the, 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 this group, uh, Dr. Walensky, Dr. Fowski, and uh, this other doctor, I don't know, but I'm sure is uh, Henry Wolke is also quite... <laughs> Uh, well, if he's working with these guys, it's obviously well up there. Um, three specific lineages reflecting variants of concern. UK variant, B117, B1351, uh, South Africa variant, so-called, and P1, so-called, Brazil variant. Now, going on to the uh, information that these authors give first in JAMA for the UK lineages, so the, the, the British lineage. September 2020, first detected... Uh, so, so, so it arose in the UK in, in September, not detected until December. So first detected then. Now, uh, so from September to December, it's now in at least 80 countries and at least 33 states in the United States. And the increased transmissibility of this is now no longer a matter for debate. We, we know it is more transmissible than the previous variant. Um, B117 could potentially reverse the present downward trends in new infections in the United States. Now, this is not faint language, reverse. The numbers could go up. And we did look at data from the, um, from, from the Washington State evaluation as well that showed there could well be a blip or an increase in cases in, um, in March. Um, the, the, we looked at that a few days ago from um, Washington University out of Seattle, um, highlighted the risk of domestic and international travel. So, you see, this has got to the United States from the UK and it hasn't swam there. Um, it, hasn't, it hasn't walked. You can't walk anymore. Um, it, it's gone in an aeroplane. This is international travel. This is the risk that is still ongoing from international travel. We were talking about this on this channel back in January 2020 certainly in February 2020, and I've been talking about it ever since, and yet still this is a huge problem. So um, February the 3rd, 2021, B117 variant in the US now approaching 1%. So that's a little bit out of date now. Well, it's, it's nearly three weeks out of date now, isn't it? Um, prevalence in some states exceeding 2%, but we know, the point is, we know that when this is transmitting freely, uh, in community transmission, that it will um, spread exponentially. So even if cases are going down altogether, the number of the B117 cases will go up while the other cases go, go down, giving a false sense of security. You think that the number of cases are going down altogether, which thankfully they are in the United States. But in actual fact, the overall prevalence and the overall number of people infected with a new, more infectious variant is going up. So it's kind of hidden 
in that overall decrease unless you have very comprehensive genomic sequencing, which unfortunately in the States there's not. So um, that is one big concern. B1351, that's the um, South Africa so-called variant. So uh, October 2020, South Africa identified in, um, probably arose in October, so it arose a month after the UK variant, but also not detected till September 2020. Now in at least 41 countries, uh, first identified in South Carolina and Maryland, uh, demonstrating um, reduced response to previous wild type antibodies. So here there's the query about whether it's going to be uh, the, the current vaccines are going to be as effective against this. Now, I, I think they probably are going to be pretty effective. In fact, we, kn we know that they're going to be fairly effective, maybe not quite as effective, D down some uh, some few percents, maybe 10% down or something. Um, but the antibodies aren't there. But of course, we have got, still got the lymphocyte response. And remember, the lymphocyte response, the ly lymphocytes is the big and small lymphocytes. The big lymphocytes are the natural killer cells. The small lymphocytes are the B and the T lymphocytes. And of course, the B and the T lymphocytes produce these memory cells that can remember infections for decades. How long they remember SARS coronavirus 2 for, we don't know. But some infections they can remember for many decades. So that's, uh, that, that's that one that they're concerned about. Then the Brazilian one they're concerned about. Um, December 2020, travellers from Brazil, it was first identified in travellers from Brazil, not in Brazil itself. I think it was first identified, uh, people going into Japan, actually, from Brazil. Uh, first found in Minnesota in the United States. Now, this paper from um, JAMA then goes on to do something really quite uh, interesting and somewhat disturbing. It gives data from Zambia. So Zambia... Uh, where, where the South African variant is uh, is now prevalent. Early December, 22 of 23 samples, 96% sequenced. Now, what this means, actually, is a very small-scale study. So they'd only done a genomic analysis on 23 samples, but 22 of those, that's 96% of those sequenced, uh, came up as the B1351 variant, the South Africa variant. So it's looking like, albeit a small sample, this is becoming the most prevalent variant in Zambia. Early December 2020 to early January 2020, this has been a massive increase. So from December 2020 just into early January, there's been this great increase. Now, as far as we know, in November, there wasn't any cases of this new variant in, in Zambia. But now it's 96% of the sequenced cases. So that's a 16-fold increase in COVID-19 uh, incidents. So there's a 16-fold increase in COVID-19 incidents between December and January. So between December and January, 16 times, 16-fold 16 increase in cases. And that completely coincided with the arrival of the new South Africa variant. So it looks very much, and this is, seems to be the concern in the paper, that the, the South Africa variant caused, we don't know for sure it caused, but it correlates well in terms of time with this massive increase in cases in Zambia. So the, the, the suspicion has to be that it was the arrival of the B1351 variant from South Africa that caused this 16-fold increase in cases in Zambia. That is a pretty frightening number, and I think that's what the authors are concerned about. The possibility of a similar experience in the US is a real threat. That is from this paper in JAMA. And because it's in italics, that means it's a direct quote. So this is clearly what they're concerned about. So there needs to be a response. Uh, first, the level of community transmission must be aggressively decreased, consisting of using face masks, physical distancing, restrictions on high risk and high capacity settings, frequent hand washing, delaying traveling, all the things we know about, widespread diagnostic testing and screening to swiftly identify, isolate infectious individuals. This is not happening anything like as quickly as it needs to in the States, but they recognize that this is a need, particularly those who are asymptomatic and quarantine contacts. So again, they're worried about the omnipresent problem in this pandemic, which is the asymptomatic spread. Second thing that needs to do, increased genomic uh, sequencing and surveillance, so they're aware of that. Um, now, 
this the, 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 the put this as a third one but really it's the same thing um cdc uh, 750 samples per week uh, that's going to increase to more than 6,000 samples per week using private laboratories so basically that's the same thing they've they divided into two points so yes uh, that need is recognized it's not yet in place Fourth, uh, accelerated SARS-CoV-2 vaccination nationally and globally. Nationally, of course, for the United States, globally to stop new variants arising in future. CDC is leading a comprehensive suite of studies to assess the actual effectiveness of these vaccines. More on that in the next video. It's looking good so far. Um, looking out for breakthrough infections. So the CDC is also looking out for infections um, that could break through the current vaccination strategy um, i'm not saying that's a risk now but the cdc do say they are looking out for it now i said i wanted to tie this together with with another point and, and the point is from yesterday's video i'm just going to um quickly point out how these are related so this was yesterday's video so so th th this was safety and efficacy of the um that's the pfizer vaccine B16, whatever, uh, mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. So in the New England Journal of Medicine, it was 94.8% protection after two doses. That was the phase three clinical trial. But after one dose, it was only 52.4% effective. So it looks like it's not effective after one dose. But then they went back and reanalyzed that and found out that this was the entire number of infections between the first dose and the second dose. But of course, now we know there's no efficacy against new infections in the first two weeks. So once they excluded the data from the first three weeks and looked at the data from three weeks onwards, or for two, two weeks onwards, they found it was very efficacious. But if you take the data after two weeks, one Pfizer dose vaccine efficacy of 92.6 based on FDA data and the Moderna vaccine 92.1 based on FDA data. We don't know how long it's going to last for. We know it's about nine weeks from studies that have been done so far, and we think it's going to be quite a bit longer. So what this paper was saying in the New England Journal of Medicine is administration of a second dose within one month added little benefit in the short term, leaving high-risk groups completely unprotected. And of course, the vaccines being rolled out in the United States at the moment are the Pfizer and the Moderna. And we see that the vast majority of the protection at least in the medium term, short to medium term, is gained after one dose. Um, so this is protection that the United States desperately needs now to stop the spread of the new variants. So I, from this, from this, it looks like to me, if the United States instigated a policy of um, a three month delay, so one Moderna or one Pfizer vaccine giving over 90% efficacy, OK, it's not as good as the nearly 95% efficacy you get with two doses, but it means you roll it out to twice as many people. And we're also getting accumulating evidence that this is reducing, that one dose of the vaccine is reducing the transmissibility of the new variants. So I think that's something for the United States to think about. They are actually perhaps in more of an emergency situation than the declining numbers would uh, would suggest. And we've been exactly through this. We had exactly the same situation in the United Kingdom with this massive increase in cases throughout December and, uh, well, going down in January, but staying high, still staying high till now, well into February. It's taken a long, long time to go down. So there we go. It is a race between the new variants and the vaccines in the United States. And it looks like combining these two data sets that going on to the one vaccine strategy would give the uh, the vaccination side of the contest a, a bit of a boost. And uh, I suspect we're going to be hearing something from the United States authorities on this soon, and I know they're actively considering it. So I just wanted to put those two things together. It is, it is a concern. Um, cases could increase in March, and th th this could potentially uh, prevent that increase, and would just carry on seeing the cases in the United States decreasing. So basically over to the American authorities to, to comment on that. Okay, just a brief video, but thank you for watching.